Hey, hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sagar Pachapati and in this video I will be talking about the Delta Lake and in the previous videos I have told you about the Delta table and how can we create it, how can we read and basically I have told you the basic operations of the Delta table. Right, so in this video I will be telling you the internals of the Delta table and how can we see other metrics of the Delta table which they stored. Okay, so before we do that, I would like to introduce my uh, website. Okay, here you can see this is my website and uh, here I upload uh, some blogs, tech blogs on data breaks, interview questions and SQL and so on. So if you are learning data breaks now or PySpark, then click on this data breaks category option. And then you can see I have written a couple of blogs over here. Let's say how to build how to find out latest folder in ADLS in Databricks. Then I have created a blog on how to create a mount point of ADLS Gen 2 in Databricks. Likewise, I have uh, created one more blog that is how to read Excel file in Databricks. So let's say if I click on this, then you can see I have explained in each like I mean every line I explained very clearly like you know what step you need to take. Let's say this is the different ways to creating a ADLS mount point. And here you can see uh, with the help of service principle, we can we can make it with the help of access key and SAS UI. And then, you know, I have explained with code also, like this is the code you can, if you want to, you know, if you want to use this code, just copy this with the help of this command, copy and paste it in your compiler or in your notebook. Cool. So, and here, here also I have given the video tutorial, which I have created a long back, not a long back, like two, three months I have created. So you can watch these videos also. And if you are interesting to learn from me, then please subscribe to my newsletter. Okay, so that you will get a, uh, get a latest post every time. Cool. Now let's go back. So in order to, Utilize the Delta uh, Delta thing. You need to install this Delta uh, hyphen Spark library. So I have installed it already, and now I have created this. Uh, you know this uh, data frame. Cool. This is the data, and then I have stored this into the one uh, one DBFS location. This could be blob storage. This could be ADLS or any other file storage. Cool. Now, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna write the code. Cool. So, first I will import delta, is delta tables, import mm, delta. Okay, let me do one thing. Let me just show you what does delta. Okay. Now you can see we have this multiple uh, multiple method or classes we have. So let's say we have this one class delta table. Inside this you can see we have these functions convert to delta, for path and so on we have it, right? So in today's video we need this class delta table. So we will import only, only delta table class, correct? Let me write here from um, delta dot tables import delta table class because I need this only. I do not need uh, to import all the classes or all the libraries we can say. Cool. Just run this. Now, since I have already loaded or uh, my data is present in my de delta lake. Cool. So I just need to read it. So for that, I'll create one object delta delta underscore table cool and call this delta table dot for path and here pass the spark session and here the path cool just run this now if you try to run this delta underscore table then you can see this returns an object Cool. Now, what I'll do, I'll do here delta table dot history. 
to know the history of this table. This returns a data frame. I need a, a data, right? So I'll here I'll write here display. Now you can see these many history we have it like I ran this table like uh, seven times, right? Not seven times, six times. Cool. And this is the history. Now I mean this is the detail of my history. Now you can see we have this version, time stamp, user ID, username. Uh, operations and so on if I go to the right side then you can see we have this multiple options multiple uh, multiple columns we have it or multiple uh, informations we have it cool now what I want to know is that I want to know how many uh, you know how many files have been processed today or we can say in the last run how many pro how many files have been processed Right, so what you can do, you can easily find out with this metric, operation matrix. Cool, inside this you can see we have uh, one JSON, num file, num output rows, num output byte, and so on. Yeah, these three only, these three, and see now, okay, if I let me know, this is operation matrix, uh, one minute. Cool, yeah. Now you can see wherever the operation, where the operation is right. So we have op operation matrix, like we have only three parameters in this operation matrix. But wherever the operation is update, there we have multiple columns. See, number of uh, removed files, number of removed bytes, and so on, so on, so on, so on. Okay. So let's say let's say you know let's say that uh, there is only a there is only a right operation in your in your system okay in your table we can say and i need to know what is the what is the uh, what what is uh, how, how many rows have been processed last time cool so what you can do you can write here select what operations you need, what column you need, you need this column, right? And which operation you need, you need only operation where, where the op, where the operation is, uh, right? Cool. So just go back here, operation is equal to, is equal to, uh, not like this, we write. Okay. So let me here import pi spark dot pi spark dot sql dot functions see with the help of these methods you can do multiple things i'm just giving you the example okay so here let me write call and since i need only a write operations details so i'm writing here write now you can see it turns and then we it returns these many things now see i cannot compare i cannot compare uh, num output bytes because you know if, suppose currently the uh, the number of rows is four the byte is three two three six let's say number of uh, rows became two or you know it gets changed so number of bytes can be can be similar in some of the cases correct but number of output rows or number of files cannot be same cannot be same it might i mean it 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 can be same but you know usually we we can come we should compare from the number of rows only so let's say i'm taking this metric so what i can do i just write here operation metric dot this column cool now you can see we have num output rows but in but what if i do if i just uh, just copy this and paste it over here then you can see we we, we have a multiple uh, versions right we have multiple versions so i need to know i need to know only from the last two versions right we i have to compare last two versions so what last two versions so what i can do i can sort it by timestamp in a decreasing order and 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 find out the uh, solution cool so here i can write here order by order by col 
decreasing and here time is stamp correct use this match this uh, column and run it this column This is also correct, right? Now it is returning me, it is returning me these five rows. I need only top two rows. So what I will do, I'll just write here take two. So it it will give me latest two uh two versions. Cool. Okay. Now what I'll do, I'll just here copy it and paste it over here and now let me create a data frame again and write it down again in this location overwrite see right now we have six rows right so if i do if i run this again then we will have a seven rows and in the latest version we have if i go right side number of rows is eight cool so if i run this i should get eight and four eight and four came right now if you want to see I mean if you want to compare you know uh, one and two then you can you can write the code like this if I write here df1 is equal to this and uh, just print just print df1 something has wrong happened see it returns me eight and four and I you know I can just write down uh, the difference between I can calculate the difference between these two. So what I will do, I'll just here uh, two, 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 for i in df one cool and yeah yeah that's cool pretty cool and here list of list of uh, number of rows something like this write it down and here df i dot what number of output rows and print not print if this of zero minus this of one is less than that I mean the difference the difference is if the difference is less than or greater than the greater than 10 cool greater than 10 then we can say please check your table check your data else you can make it pass cool so let me just convert this into an integer format. Now you can see we have the output. So the output is pass, correct? Because the difference between the difference between these two is not greater than 10. The difference is 4. Cool. So if I just write down here, let's say uh, 4, right? 4. We'll see whether what, what will happen. Now you can see it is showing please check your data it means see yesterday yesterday you have uh, okay let me explain you like this today's today's run cool this is today run and number of rows let's say number of rows 100 and yesterday run number of rows is let's say 20 now see yesterday yes when I ran yesterday the count is the count was 20 but when I ran today the count is 100 
So the difference is 80. Now you might see there is a huge difference between the count of rows in a table, in the same table. So you can, you know, you can trigger some mail, you can trigger something so that you will understand and you know, suppose this is, maybe this is the actual value, but sometime what happens, we write our, uh, the, 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 we write the code in sub, such manner that, you know, we, we may face some issue in the code and we, and we do not know whether we have put the correct logic, we have whether we've put the uh, correct left join and all other things, right? So by looking this data, you can easily understand, okay, there should not be difference of 80 in a single day. Cool. There should not be a, uh, you, this much huge difference in a single day. So suppose this, sup yes, right. Then you can, you, you can just trigger it and you can go back and check your data and so on. Cool. So this is the this is the way how we can achieve the how we can validate we can say how we can validate our data. Cool. I hope you have understood this concept. Please subscribe to my channel and share with your friends if you if you if are liking my content. And I will be creating a end-to-end -end project and I will be uploading that project on my website. So if you are interested, please comment me, DM me, or ping me in my Telegram channel. Okay. And that do, that project will be of rupees five hundred to one thousand rupees, not more than that. From I'm I'm like ninety hundred percent sure. Okay, so please watch my videos. Like if you haven't watched me why me my previous videos, please go back and watch some uh some you know ADF videos, uh, database videos, SQL videos, and so on. Chalo, thank you.